Ulysses 15, G, the seventh of seven parts. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ulysses by James Joyce, 15, G. Simon. Think of your mother's people. Stephen. Dance of death. Bang, fresh barang, bang of lackey's bell. Horse, nag, steer, piglings, commie on Christ ass, lame crutch and leg, sailor and cockboat, arm folded, rope pulling, hitching swamp hornpipe through and through. Burra bum! On nags, hogs, bell horses, gadarene swine. Corny in coffin, steel, shark, stone, one handled Nelson, two tricky Frauenzimmer, plum stain from pram falling, bawling. Come, he's a champion. Fuse blue peer from barrel. Reverend Evensong, love on hackney jaunt, blazes. Blind, quadrupled bicyclers, dilly with snow cake, no fancy clothes. Then in last switchback, lumbering up and down, mash tub, sort of viceroy and ren, relish for tublama bumpsha rose, burra bum. The couples fall aside. Stephen whirls giddily. Room whirls back. Eyes closed, he totters. Red rails fly spacewards. Stars all around, suns turn round about. Bright midges dance on walls. He stops dead. Stephen. Ho! Stephen's mother, emaciated. Rises stark through the floor, in leper grey, with a wreath of faded orange blossoms and a torn bridal veil, her face worn and noseless, green with grave mould. Her hair is scant and lank. She fixes her blue-circled hollow eye-sockets on Stephen and opens her toothless mouth, uttering a silent word. A choir of virgins and confessors sing voicelessly. The choir. Confessor. 
From the top of a tower, Buck Mulligan, in party-colored jester's dress of puce and yellow, and clown's cap with curling bell, stands gaping at her, a smoking buttered split scone in his hand. Buck Mulligan. She's beastly dead. The pity of it. Mulligan makes the afflicted mother. He upturns his eyes. Mercurial Malachi! The mother. With a subtle smile of death's madness. I was once the beautiful May Goulding. I am dead. Stephen. Horror struck. Lima, who are you? No. What bogeyman's trick is this? Buck Mulligan. Shakes his curling cap bell. The mockery of it! King Stokes' body killed a bitch body. She kicked the bucket. Tears of molten butter fall from his eyes onto the scone. Oh, great sweet mother! Epion ope ponton! The mother. Comes nearer, breathing upon him softly, her breath of wetted ashes. All must go through it, Stephen. More women than men in the world. You too. Time will come. Stephen. Choking with fright, remorse, and horror. They say I killed you, mother. He offended your memory. Cancer did it, not I. Destiny. The mother. A green rill of bile trickling from a side of her mouth. You sang that song to me. Love's bitter mystery. Stephen. Eagerly. Tell me the word, mother, if you know now. The word known to all men. The mother. Who saved you the night you jumped into the train at Dalkey with Paddy Lee? Who had pity for you when you were sad among the strangers? Prayer is all-powerful. Prayer for the suffering souls in the Ursuline Manual and Forty Days Indulgence. Repent, Stephen. Stephen. The ghoul. Hyena. The mother. I pray for you in my other world. Get Dilly to make you that boiled rice every night after your brain work. Years and years I loved you. Oh, my son, my firstborn, when you lay in my womb. Zoe. Fanning herself with a great fan. I'm melting. Flory. Points to Stephen. Look. Here's white. Bloom. Goes to the window to open it more. Giddy. The mother. With smoldering eyes. Repent! Oh, the fire of hell! Stephen. Panting. His non-corrosive sublimate. The corpse chewer. Raw head and bloody bones. The mother. Her face drawing near and nearer, sending out an ashen breath. Beware! She raises her blackened, withered right arm slowly towards Stephen's breast with outstretched finger. Beware God's hand! A green crab with malignant red eyes sticks deep its grinning claws in Stephen's heart. Stephen. Strangled with rage. His features grow drawn grey and old. Shite. Bloom. At the window. What? Stephen. Ah, non, par exemple. The intellectual imagination, with me all or not at all, non serviam. Flory. Give him some cold water. Wait. She rushes out. The mother. Wrings her hands slowly, moaning desperately. Oh, sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on him. Save him from hell. Oh, divine, sacred heart. Stephen. No, no, no. Break my spirit, all of you, if you can. I'll bring you all to heal. The mother. In the agony of her death rattle. Have mercy on Stephen, Lord, for my sake. Inexplicable.
inexpressible was my anguish when expiring with love, grief, and agony on Mount Calvary. Stephen. No thung. He lifts his ash plant high, high with, with both, both hands. hands and smashes the chandelier. Time's livid final flame leaps. leaps, and in the following darkness, ruin of all space, shattered glass, and toppling masonry. The gas jet. Foam. Bloom. Stop. Lynch. Rushes forward and seizes Stephen's hand. Here, hold on. Don't run amok. Bella. Alice! Stephen, abandoning his ash plant, his head and arms thrown back, stark beats the ground and flies from the room, past the whores at the door. Bella. Screams. After him! The two whores rush to the hall door. Lynch and Kitty and Zoe stampede from the room. They talk excitedly. Bloom follows, returns. The whores. Jammed in the doorway, pointing. Down there! Zoe. Pointing. There! There's something up. Bella. He pays for the lamp. She seizes Bloom's coat-tail. Here, you were with him. The lamp's broken. Bloom. Rushes to the hall, rushes back. What lamp, woman? A whore. He tore his coat. Bella. Her eyes hard with anger and cupidity, points. He's to pay for that. Ten shillings. You're a witness. Bloom. Snatches up Stephen's ash plant. Me? Ten shillings? Haven't you lifted enough off him? Didn't he? Bella. Loudly. Here, none of your tall talk. This isn't a brothel. A ten shilling house. Bloom. His head under the lamp pulls the chain. Pulling, the gas jet lights up a crushed mauve purple shade. He raises the ash plant. Only the chimney's broken. Here is all he... Bella. Shrinks back and screams. Jesus, don't! Bloom. Warding off a blow. To show you how he hit the paper... There's not sixpence worth of damage done. Ten shillings. Flory. With a glass of water, enters. Where is he? Bella. Do you want me to call the police? Bloom. Oh, I know. Bulldog on the premises. But he's a Trinity student. Patrons of your establishment. Gentlemen that pay the rent. He makes a Masonic sign. Know what I mean? Nephew of the Vice-Chancellor. You don't want a scandal. Bella. Angrily. Trinity. Come down here, ragging after the bull traces and paying nothing. Are you my commander here? Where is he? I'll charge him. Disgrace him, I will. She shouts. Zoe! Zoe! Bloom. Urgently. And if it were your own son at Oxford? Warningly. I know. Bella. Almost speechless. Who are... And cook? Zoe. In the doorway. There's a row on. Bloom. What? Where? He throws a shilling on the table and starts. That's for the chimney. Where? I need mountain air. He hurries out through the hall, the whore's point. Flory follows, spilling water from her tilted tumbler. On the doorstep all the whores clustered talk volubly, pointing to the right where the fog has cleared off. From the left arrives a jingling hackney car. It slows to in front of the house. Bloom, at the hall door, perceives Corny Kelleher, who is about to dismount from the car with two silent lechers. He averts his face. Bella, from within the hall, urges on her whores. They blow icky-licky-sticky-yum-yum kisses. Corny Kelleher replies with a ghastly lewd smile. The silent lechers turn to pay the jarvey. Zoe and Kitty still point right. Bloom, parting them swiftly, draws his caliph's hood and poncho, and hurries down the steps with sideways face. Incog Harun al-Rashid, he flits behind the silent lechers and hastens on by the railings with fleet step of a pard, strewing the drag behind him, torn envelopes drenched in aniseed. The ash-plant marks his stride. A pack of bloodhounds, led by hornblower of Trinity, brandishing a dog-whip in tally-ho cap and an old pair of grey trousers, follow from far, picking up the scent, Nearer, baying, panting at fault, breaking away, throwing their tongues, biting his heels, leaping at his tail. He walks, runs, zigzags, gallops, lugs laid back. He is pelted with gravel, cabbage stumps, biscuit boxes, eggs, potatoes, dead codfish, women's slipper slappers. After him, fresh found, the hue and cry zigzag gallops in hot pursuit of follow my leader. 
65 C, 66 C, Night Watch, John Henry Menton, Wisdom Healy, V. B. Dillon, Councillor Nanetti, Alexander Keyes, Larry O'Rourke, Joe Cuff, Mrs. O'Dowd, Pisser Burke, The Nameless One, Mrs. Reardon, The Citizen, Gary Owen, Who Do You Call Him, Strange Face, Fella That's Alike, Saw Him Before, Chap of the Wen, Chris Callanan, Sir Charles Cameron, Benjamin Dollard, Lenahan, Bartel Darcy, Joe Hines, Red Murray, Editor Braden, T. M. Healy, Mr. Justice Fitzgibbon, John Howard Parnell, The Reverend Tin Salmon, Professor Jolly, Mrs. Breen, Dennis Breen, Theodore Purefoy, Mina Purefoy, The Western Row Post Mistress, C. P. McCoy, Friend of Lions, Hoppy Hollihan, Man in the Street, Other Man in the Street, Football Boots, Pugnose Driver, Rich Protestant Lady, Davy Byrne, Mrs. Ellen McGuinness, Mrs. Joe Gallagher, George Lidwell, Jimmy Henry on Corns, Superintendent Laracy, Father Cowley, Crofton out of the Collector Generals, Dan Dawson, Dental Sergeant Bloom with Tweezers, Mrs. Bob Doran, Mrs. Kennefick, Mrs. Wise Nolan, John Wise Nolan, Handsome Married Woman Rubbed Against White Behind in Clons Keatrum, The Bookseller of Sweets of Sin, Miss Doobie Dad and She Did Be Dad, Madame's Gerald and Stanislaw Moran of Roebuck, The Managing Clerk of Dribbies, Colonel Hayes, Mastiansky, Citron, Penrose, Aaron Figatner, Moses Herzog, Michael E. Garrity, Inspector Troy, Mrs. Galbraith, The Constable of Eccles Street Corner, Old Dr. Brady with Stethoscope, The Mystery Man on the Beach, A Retriever, Mrs. Mary and Dandred, and all her lovers. The Hue and Cry. Pelter, Skelter, Pelter, Welter. He's Bloom! Stop Bloom! Stop a Bloom! Stop a robber! Hi! Hi! Stop him on the corner! At the corner of Beaver Street, beneath the scaffolding, Bloom, panting, stops on the fringe of the noisy quarreling knot. A lot not knowing a jot, what, hi, hi, row and wrangle round the who, what, brawl all together. Stephen. With elaborate gestures, breathing deeply and slowly. You are my guests. Uninvited, by virtue of the fifth of George and the seventh of Edward, history to blame, fabled by mothers of memory. Private Carr. To Sissy Caffrey. Was he insulting you? Stephen. Addressed her invocative feminine, probably neuter, ungenitive. Voices. No, he didn't. I seen him. Girl there. He was in Mrs. Corns. What's up? Soldier and civilian. Sissy Caffrey. I was in company with the soldiers, and they left me to do, you know, and the young man ran up behind me. But I'm faithful to the man that's treating me, though I'm only a shilling whore. Stephen. Catches sight of Lynch's and Kitty's heads. Hail, Sisyphus. He points to himself and the others. Poetic. Euro-poetic. Voices. She's faithful, the man. Sissy Caffrey. Yes, to go with him. And me with a soldier friend. Private Compton. He doesn't want half a thick ear, the blighter. If I'm one, Harry. Private Carr. To Sissy Caffrey. Was he insulting you while me and him were having a piss? Lord Tennyson. Gentleman poet in Union Jack blazer and cricket flannels. Bareheaded, flowing bearded. There's not the reason why. Private Compton. If I'm Harry. Stephen. To Private Compton. I don't know your name, but you are quite right. Dr. Swift says one man in armor will beat ten men in their shirts. Shirt is zinnikdosh, part for the whole. Sissy Caffrey. To the crowd. No, I was with the privates. Stephen. Amiably. Why not? The bold soldier boy, in my opinion every lady, for example. Private Carr. His cap awry, advances to Stephen. Say, how would it be, Governor? If I was to bash in your jaw... Stephen. Looks up to the sky. How? Very unpleasant. Noble art of self-pretense. Personally, I detest action. He waves his hand. Hand hurts me slightly. Enfin, ce sont vos oignons. To Sissy Caffrey. Some trouble is on here. What is it precisely? Dolly Gray. From her balcony waves her handkerchief, giving the sign of the heroine of Jericho. Cook, son, goodbye. Say from to Dolly. Dream of the girl you left behind, and she will dream of you. The soldiers turn their swimming eyes. Bloom. Elbowing through the crowd, plucks Stephen's sleeve vigorously. Come now, Professor. That car man is waiting. Stephen. Turns. Eh? He disengages himself. Why should I not speak to him or to any human being who walks upright upon this oblate orange? He points his finger. 
I am not afraid of what I can talk to if I can see his eye, retaining the perpendicular. He staggers a pace back. Bloom. Propping him. Retain your own. Stephen. Laughs emptily. <laughs> My centre of gravity is displaced. I have forgotten the trick. Let us sit down somewhere and discuss. Struggle for life is the law of existence, but but human filirenists, notably the Tsar and the King of England, have invented arbitration. He taps his brow. But in here it is I must kill the priest and the king. Biddy the clap. Did you hear what the professor said? He's a professor out of the college. Cunty Kate. I did. I heard that. Biddy the clap. He expresses himself with such marked refinement of phraseology. Cunty Kate. Indeed, yes, and at the same time with such opposite trenchancy. Private Carr pulls himself free and comes forward. What's that you're saying about my king? Edward the Seventh appears in an archway. He wears a white jersey on which an image of the Sacred Heart is stitched with the insignia of garter and thistle, golden fleece, elephant of Denmark, Skinner's and Proben's horse, Lincoln's Inn bencher, and ancient and honorable artillery company of Massachusetts. He sucks a red jujube. He is robed as a grand elect perfect and sublime mason with trowel and apron, marked made in Germany. In his left hand he holds a plasterer's bucket on which is printed Defense du Rhin. A roar of welcome greets him. Edward the Seventh. Slowly, solemnly, but indistinctly. Peace, perfect peace. For identification, bucket in my hand. Cheerio, boys. He turns to his subjects. We have come here to witness a clean, straight fight, and we heartily wish both men the best of good luck. Mahak, Makar, Abak. He shakes hands with Private Carr, Private Compton, Stephen, Bloom, and Lynch. General applause. Edward the Seventh lifts his bucket graciously in acknowledgment. Private Carr. To Stephen. Say it again. Stephen. Nervous, friendly, pulls himself up. I understand your point of view, though I have no king myself for the moment. Here is the age of patent medicines. A discussion is difficult down here, but this is the point. You die for your country. Suppose he places his arm on Private Carr's sleeve. Not that I wish it for you, but I say, let my country die for me. Up to the present, it has done so. I didn't want it to die. Damn death! Long live life. Edward the Seventh. Levitates over heads of slain in the garb and with a halo of joking Jesus, a white jujube in his phosphorescent face. My methods are new and are causing surprise. To make the blind see, I throw dust in their eyes. Stephen, kings and unicorns. He fills back a pace. Come somewhere and we'll. Uh, what was the girl saying? Private Compton. Hey, Harry, give him a kick in the knackers. Stick one into Jerry. Bloom to the privates softly. He doesn't know what he's saying. Taken a little more than is good for him. Absinthe, green-eyed monster. I know him. He's a gentleman, a poet. It's all right. Stephen nods, smiling and laughing. Gentleman, patriot, scholar, and judge of impostors. Private Carr. I don't give a bugger who he is. Private Compton, we don't give a bugger who he is. Stephen, I seem to annoy them. Green rag to a bull. Kevin Egan of Paris in black Spanish tasselled shirt and peeper days boy's hat signs to Stephen. Kevin Egan. Hello, bonjour, the vieille ogress with the donjon. Patrice Egan peeps from behind, his rabbit face nibbling a quince leaf. Patrice. Socialist, Don Emil Patrizio Franz Rupert Pope Hennessy. In medieval hauberk, two wild geese volant on his helm, with noble indignation, points a mailed hand against the privates. Where if they was oiks to foot boden, be grand burkos of John Yellow's, Toros coward of gravy. Bloom to Stephen. 
Come home. You'll get into trouble. Stephen. Swaying. I don't avoid it. He provokes my intelligence. Biddy the clap. One immediately observes that he is of patrician lineage. The virago. Green above the red, says he. Woofton. The boar. The red's as good as the green, and better. Up the soldiers, up King Edward. A rough. Laughs. Ha <laughs> ha Hands up to the wit. The citizen. With a huge emerald muffler and shalila. Calls. May the god above send down a dove with teeth as sharp as razors to slit the throats of the English dogs that hanged our Irish leaders. The cruppy boy. The rope noose round his neck gripes in his issuing bowels with both hands. I bear no heed to a living thing. But I love my country beyond the king. Rumble, demon barber. Accompanied by two black-masked assistants, advances with gladstone bag, which he opens. Ladies and gents, cleaver purchased by Mrs. Percy to slay Mog. Knife with which Foisin dismembered the wife of a compatriot and hid remains in a sheet in the cellar, the unfortunate female's throat being cut from ear to ear, file containing arsenic, retrieved from body of Miss Barron, which sent Seddon to the gallows. He jerks the rope, the assistants leap at the victim's legs and drag him downward. Grunting, the croppy boy's tongue protrudes violently. The Croppy Boy. Or hot, hooray, or hother's hest. He gives up the ghost. A violent erection of the hanged sends gouts of sperm spouting through his death clothes onto the cobblestones. Mrs. Bellingham, Mrs. Yelverton Barry, and the Honorable Mrs. Mervyn Tallboys rush forward with their handkerchiefs to sop it up. Rumble. I'm near it myself. He undoes the noose. Rope, which hanged the awful rebel, ten shillings a time, as applied to her royal highness. He plunges his head into the gaping belly of the hanged and draws out his head again, clotted with coiled and smoking entrails. My painful duty has now been done. God save the king. Edward the Seventh. Dances slowly, solemnly, rattling his bucket, and sings with soft contentment. On coronation day, on coronation day, oh, won't we have a merry time, drinking whiskey, beer, and wine. Private car. Here, what are you saying about my king? Stephen. Throws up his hands. Oh, this is too monotonous. Nothing. He wants my money and my life, though want must be his master for some brutish empire of his. Money I haven't. He searches his pockets vaguely. Gave it to someone. Private car. Who wants your bleeding money? Stephen. Tries to move off. Will someone tell me where I am least likely to meet these necessary evils? Ça se voit aussi à Paris. Not that I... but by St. Patrick... The women's heads coalesce. Old gummy granny in sugarloaf hat appears seated on a toadstool, the death flower of the potato blight on her breast. Stephen, aha, I know you, Gamma. Hamlet, revenge, the old sow that eats her farrow. Old gummy granny. Rocking to and fro. Ireland, sweetheart, the king of Spain's daughter, Alana. Strangers in my house, bad manners to them. She keens with banshee woe. Mo, achon, achon, silk of the kind. She wails. You met with poor old Ireland, and how does she stand? Oh. Stephen. How do I stand you? The hat-trick. Where's the third person of the Blessed Trinity? Sogoth Arun, the Reverend Carrion Crow. 
Sissy Capri. Shrill. Stop them from fighting. A rough. Our men retreated. Private car. Tugging at his belt. I'll wring the neck of any fucker says a word against my fucking king. Bloom. Terrified. He said nothing, not a word, a pure misunderstanding. The citizen. Erin Gobra. Major Tweedy and the citizen exhibit to each other medals, decorations, trophies of war, wounds. Both salute with fierce hostility. Private Compton. Go it, Terry. Do him on the eyes of Prober. Stephen. Did I? When? Bloom. To the Redcoats. We fought for you in South Africa, Irish missile troops. Isn't that history? Royal Dublin Fusiliers, honoured by our monarch. The Navi. Staggering past. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. Oh, make the quower a crower. Oh, bo. Cast halberdiers and armour thrust forward a pentis of gutted spear points. Major Tweedy, moustached like Turco the Terrible, in bearskin cap with hackle plume and accoutrements, with epaulettes, gilt chevrons, and sabre tashes, his breast bright with medals, toes the line. He gives the pilgrim warriors sign of the Knights Templars. Major Tweedy. Grills gruffly. Rocks drift, up guards and at them. Maha Shalah has bars. Private car. I'll do him in. Private Compton. Waves the crowd back. Fair play here. You're bush shot. Massed bands blare Gary Owen and God Save the King. Sissy Cap. They're going to fight for me. Twenty Kate. The brave and the fair. Biddy the clap. Methinks yon sable knight will joust it with the best. Twenty Kate. Blushing deeply. Nay, madam. The ghouls double it and marry St. George for me. Stephen. The harlots cry from street to street shall weave old Ireland's winding sheet. Private car. Loosening his belt, shouts, I'll wring the neck of any fucking bastard, says a word, against my bleeding fucking king. Bloom. Shakes Sissy Caffrey's shoulders. Speak, you. Are you struck dumb? You are the link between nations and generations. Speak, woman, sacred life giver. Sissy Caffrey. Alarmed, seizes private car's sleeve. Amped I with you? Amped I your girl? Sissy's your girl. She cries. Police! Stephen. Ecstatically to Sissy Caffrey. White thy fambles, red thy gown, thy quarrels dainty is. Voice. Police! Distant voice. Dublin's burning! Dublin's burning! On fire! On fire! On fire! Brimstone fires spring up. Dense clouds roll past. Heavy cutting guns boom. Pandemonium. Troops deploy. Gallop of hoofs. Artillery. Horse commands. Bells clang. Backers shout. Drunkards pull. Hoars screech. Foghorns hoot. Cries of valor. Shrieks of dying. Pikes clash on cuirasses. Thieves rob the slain. Birds of prey winging from the sea, rising from marshlands, swooping from Ares, hover screaming, gannets, cormorants, vultures, goshawks, climbing woodcocks, peregrines, merlins, black grass, sea eagles, gulls, albatrosses, barnacle geese. The midnight sun is darkened, the earth trembles. The dead of Dublin, from Prospect and Mount Jerome, in white sheepskin overcoats and black goatfell coats, arise and appear to many. A chasm opens with a noiseless yawn. Tom Rochford, winner, in athlete's singlet and breeches, 
arrives at the head of the National Hurdle Handicap and leaps into the void. He is followed by a race of runners and leapers. In wild attitudes they spring from the brink. Their bodies plunge. Factory lasses with fancy clothes toss red-hot Yorkshire barra bombs. Society ladies lift their skirts above their heads to protect themselves. Laughing witches in red cutty socks ride through the air on broomsticks. The Quaker lister plasters blisters. It rains dragon's teeth. Armed heroes spring up from furrows. They exchange in amity the pass of knights of the Red Cross and fight duels with cavalry sabres. Wolf Tone against Henry Grattan, Smith O'Brien against Daniel O'Connell, Michael Davitt against Isaac Butt, Justin McCarthy against Parnell, Arthur Griffith against John Redmond, John O'Leary against Lero Johnny, Lord Edward Fitzgerald against Lord Gerald Fitzdevitt, the O'Donoghue of the Glens against the Glens of the O'Donoghue. On an eminence, the centre of the earth, rises the felled altar of St. Barbara. Black candles rise from its gospel and epistle horns. From the high barbicans of the tower, two shafts of light fall on the smoke-pulled altar-stone. On the altar-stone, Mrs. Mina Purefoy, goddess of unreason, lies naked, fettered, a chalice resting on her swollen belly. Father Malachi O'Flynn, in a lace petticoat and reversed chasuble, his two left feet back to the front, celebrates camp mass. The Reverend Mr. Hugh Chain's love, M.A., in a plain cassock and mortarboard, his head and collar back to the front, holds over the celebrant's head an open umbrella. Father Malachi O'Flynn in troibo ad altare diabole. The Reverend Mr. Haynes' love. To the devil which hath made glad my young days. Father Malachin O'Flynn. Takes from the chalice and elevates a blood-dripping host. Corpus meum. The Reverend Mr. Haynes' love. Raises high behind the celebrant's petticoat revealing his grey, bare, hairy buttocks between which a carrot is stuck. My body. The voices of all the damned. From on high, the voice of Adonai calls. Adonai. No. The voices of all the blessed. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. From on high, the voice of Adonai calls. Adonai. Good. In strident discord, peasants and townsmen of orange and green factions sing Kick the Pope and Daily Daily Sing to Mary. Private car. With ferocious articulation. I'll do him in, so help me, Fucking Christ, I'll ring the bastard fucker's bleeding blasted fucking windpipe. Old Gummy Granny thrusts a dagger towards Stephen's hand. Remove him, Acusha, at 8.35 a.m. You will be in heaven, and Ireland will be free. She prays. Oh, good God, take him. The Retriever. Nosing on the fringe of the crowd, barks noisily. Bloom. Runs to Lynch. Can't you get him away? Lynch. He likes dialectic, the universal language. Kitty! To Bloom. Get him away, you? He, he won't listen to me. He drags Kitty away. Stephen. Points. Exit Judas. At Laquiose suspended. Bloom. Runs to Stephen. Come along with me now before worse happens. Here's your stick. Stephen. Stick? No. Reason. This feast of pure reason. Sissy Caffrey. Pulling private car. Come on, you're boozed. He insulted me, but I forgive him. Shouting in his ear. I forgive him for insulting me. Bloom. Over Stephen's shoulder. 
Yes, go. You see he's incapable. Private car. Breaks loose. I'll insult him. He rushes towards Stephen, fist outstretched, and strikes him in the face. Stephen totters, collapses, falls, stunned. He lies prone, his face to the sky, his hat rolling to the wall. Bloom follows and picks it up. Major Tweedy. Loudly. Carbine in bucket. Cease fire. Salute. The Retriever. Barking furiously. <laughs> the Crowd. Let him off. Ah, don't strike him when he's down. Yeah. Who? The soldier hit him. He's a professor. Does he hurt it? Don't manhandle him. He's fainted. What call had the red coat to strike the gentleman? And he, under the influence, let them go and fight the boars. The boar. Listen to who's talking. And the sailor right to go with his girl. He gave the coward's blow. They grab at each other's hair, claw at each other, and spit. The retriever. Barking. Dun, dun, dun. Bloom. Shoves them back loudly. Get back! Stand back! Private Compton. Tugging his comrade. Here, yeah, bugger off, Harry. Here's the cops. Two rain-caped watch, tall, stand in the group. First watch. What's wrong here? Private Compton. We were with this lady and he insulted us. He insulted my chum. The retriever barks. <laughs> Sissy Caffrey. With expectation. Is he bleeding? A man. Rising from his knees. No. Gone off. He'll come to all right. Bloom. Glances sharply at the man. Leave him to me. I can easily... Second watch. Who are you? Do you know him? Private car. Lurches towards the watch. He insulted my lady friend. Bloom. Angrily. You hit him without provocation. I'm a witness. Constable, take his regimental number. Second watch. I don't want your instructions in the discharge of my duty. Private Compton. Pulling his comrade. Here, yeah, bugger off, Harry. Or will binnot will shove you in the lockup. Private Carr. Staggering as he is pulled away. God fuck old Bennett. He's a white arsed bugger. I don't give a shit for him. First watch. Takes out his notebook. What's his name? Bloom. Peering over the crowd. I just see a car there. If you give me a hand a second, Sergeant. First watch. Name and address. Corny Kelleher, weepers round his hat, a death wreath in his hand, appears from the bystanders. Bloom. Quickly. Oh, the very man. He whispers. Simon Daedalus' son. A bit sprung. Get those policemen to move those loafers back. Second watch. Not Mr. Kelleher. Corny Kelleher. To the watch with drawling eye. Oh, that's all right. I know him. Won a bit on the races. Gold cup. Throw away. He laughs. <laughs> Twenty to one. Do you follow me? First watch. Turns to the crowd. Here, what are you all gaping at? Move on out of that. The crowd disperses slowly, muttering down the lane. Corny Kelleher. Leave it to me, Sergeant. That'll be all right. He laughs, shaking his head. We were often as bad ourselves, eh? Or worse. What, eh? What? Hmm? First watch. Laughs. I suppose so. <laughs> Corny Kelleher. Nudges the second watch. Come on, wipe your name off the slate, hmm? He lilts, wagging his head. <laughs> With my turaloom, 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 turaloom. What, eh? Do you follow me? Second watch. Genially. Ah, sure we were, too. Corny Kelleher. Winking. <laughs> boys will be boys. I have got a car round there. Second watch. All right, Mr. Keller. Good night. Corny Kelleher. I see to that. Bloom. 
shakes hands with both of the watch in turn. Thank you very much, gentlemen, thank you. He mumbles confidentially. We don't want any scandal, you understand. Father is a well-known, highly respected citizen. Just a little wild oats, you understand. First watch. I understand, sir. Second watch. That's all right, sir. First watch. It was only in case of corporal injuries I'd have to report her to the station. <laughs> Bloom. Nods rapidly. Naturally, quite right. Only your bounden duty. Second watch. It's our duty. Corny Kelleher. Good night, men. The watch. Saluting together. Not, gentlemen. They move off with slow, heavy tread. Bloom. Blows. Providential, you came on the scene. You have a car? Corny Kelleher. Laughing, pointing his thumb over his right shoulder to the car brought up against the scaffolding. <laughs> Two commercials that were standing fees and jammets, like princes, Faith. One of them lost two quid on the race, drowning his grief, and were on for a go with the jolly girls. So I landed them up on Bean's car and down to Night Town. Bloom. I was just going home by Gardiner Street when I happened to... Corny Kelleher. Laughs. <laughs> sure, they wanted me to join in with the moths. <laughs> oh, by God, says I, not for all the staggers like meself and yourself. He laughs again and leers with lacklustre eye. <laughs> Thanks be to God we have it in the house, what, eh? <laughs> Do you follow me? <laughs> Bloom. Tries to laugh. He, 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 yes. Matter of fact, I was just visiting an old friend of mine there, Virag. You don't know him. Poor fellow he's laid up for the past week. And we had a liquor together, and I was just making my way home. The horse neighs. The horse. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Corny Kelleher. Sure it was being our Jarvie there that told me after we left this two commercials in Mrs. Cohen's, and I told him to pull up and got off to sea. He laughs. <laughs> the sober horse driver is a specialty. Will I give him a lift home? Where does he hang out? Somewhere in Cabra, what? Bloom. No, in Sandy Cove, I believe, from what he let drop. Stephen, prone, breathes to the stars. Corny Kelleher, a squint, drawls at the horse. Bloom in gloom looms down. Corny Kelleher. Scratches his nape. Sandy Cove! He bends down and calls to Stephen. Eh? He calls again. Eh, hey, he's covered with shavings anyhow. Take care they didn't lift anything off him. Bloom. No, no, no. I have his money and his hat here and stick. Corny Kelleher. Ah, well, he'll get over it. No boards broken. Well, I'll shove along. He laughs. <laughs> I have a rendezvous in the morning, uh, burying the dead. Safe home. The horse. Nays. Ho, ho, ho. Bloom. Good night. I'll just wait and take him along in a few. Corny Kelleher returns to the outside car and mounts it. The horse harness jingles. Corny Kelleher. From the car, standing. Night! Bloom. Night. The Javi chucks the reins and raises his whip encouragingly. The car and horse back slowly, awkwardly, and turn. Corny Kelleher, on the side seat, sways his head to and fro in sign of mirth at Bloom's plight. The Javi joins in the mute pantomimic merriment, nodding from the farther seat. Bloom shakes his head in mute, mirthful reply. With thumb and palm, Corny Kelleher reassures that the two bobbies will allow the sleep to continue for what else is to be done. With a slow nod, Bloom conveys his gratitude, as that is exactly what Stephen needs. The car jingles Turaloom around the corner of the Turaloom Lane. Corny Kelleher again reassure looms with his hand. Bloom with his hand assure looms Corny Kelleher that he is with their Turalulu Lulu lay. Bloom holding in his hand Stephen's hat, festooned with shavings and ash plant, 
stands irresolute. Then he bends to him and shakes him by the shoulder. Bloom. Hey, ho! There is no answer. He bends again. Mr. Daedalus. There is no answer. The name, if you call, somnambulist. He bends again and, hesitating, brings his mouth near the face of the prostrate form. Stephen. There is no answer. He calls again. Stephen. Stephen. Groans. Who? Black Panther? Vampire. He sighs and stretches himself, <sighs> then murmurs thickly with prolonged vowels. Who drive Fergus now, and pierce wood's woven shade? He turns on his left side, sighing, doubling himself together. Bloom. Poetry. Well educated. Pity. He bends again and undoes the buttons of Stephen's waistcoat. To breathe. He brushes the wood shavings from Stephen's clothes with a light hand and fingers. One pound seven. Not hurt anyhow. He listens. What? Stephen. Murmurs. Shadows. The woods. White breast. Dim sea. He stretches out his arms, sighs again, and curls his body. Bloom, holding the hat and ash plant, stands erect. A dog barks in the distance. Bloom tightens and loosens his grip on the ash plant. He looks down on Stephen's face and form. Bloom. Communes with the night. Face reminds me of his poor mother, in the shady wood. The deep white breast. Ferguson, I think I caught. A girl, some girl. Best thing could happen him. He murmurs. Swear that I will always hail, ever conceal, never reveal any part or parts, art or arts. He murmurs. In the rough sands of the sea, a cable toes length from the shore where the tide ebbs and flows. Silent, thoughtful, alert, he stands on guard his fingers at his lips, in the attitude of secret master. Against the dark wall a figure appears slowly, a fair boy of eleven, a changeling, kidnapped, dressed in an eaten suit, with glass shoes and a little bronze helmet, holding a book in his hand. He reads from right to left, inaudibly, smiling, kissing the page. Bloom. Wonderstruck. Calls inaudibly. Rudy. Rudy. Gazes unseeing into Bloom's eyes and goes on reading, kissing, smiling. He has a delicate mauve face. On his suit he has diamond and ruby buttons. In his free left hand he holds a slim ivory cane with a violet bow knot. A white lambkin peers out of his waistcoat pocket. End of Ulysses 15 Credits for Ulysses 15F and 15G The editing was done in ten segments. First, fifth, and sixth segments, with The Woods, The Dance, and The Ghost, were edited by Anita Roy Dobbs. Second and fourth segments, with The Brothel and The Race, were edited and sound designed by Stefan Mubius. Third and tenth segments with The Affair and The End were edited by Gesina. Seventh segment with The Chase was edited by The Good Reverend Doctor. Eighth and ninth segments with The Kings and The Fight were edited and sound designed by Annalika. Readers for 15F and 15G were Character Identifications read by Chip Narration read by Gesina, John Greenman, and Anita Roy Dobbs. Bloom read by David Barnes. Stephen read by Alex Foster. Kitty read by Kristen Lemoyne. Flory read by Alicia. Zoe read by Catherine Eastman. Lynch read by Stefan Mubius. Bella list of names and sundry characters read by Kin Zuckert. Marion, read by Nicole Doolin. Boylan, read by Rayner. 
Private Carr, read by Matthew Shepard. Private Compton, read by Seth Woodworth. Sissy Caffrey, read by Kara Schallenberg. McGinney, read by Hugh McGuire. The Mother, read by Cynthia Lyons. Additional sundry characters and background voices, read by Peter Yearsley, Martin Cunningham, Stefan Mubius, Kim Zuckert, Ted DeLorme, Hajduk, John Greenman, Tina Tilney, Annie Coleman, The Good Reverend Doctor, Mark Smith, Esther, Cecilia, Gazina, Anita Roy Dobbs, Kristen Lemoyne, Catherine Eastman, and Peter Eastman.